Hello everyone. So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, new, how to handle numerical features in scikit-learn.preprocessing package. So just like we saw uh, encoding of categorical features, similarly in the same sense, you can decode numerical features into categorical values. Now, why to convert into categorical values? It is because uh, for tree models especially categories are uh, really helpful for the accuracy so let's see what we'll be looking at in this video we'll see the prerequisites then introduction discretization binarization documentation and sample code so the prerequisites uh, just like almost all of the other videos are python numpy and pandas now introduction so just like categorical data can be encoded, uh, like I said, numerical features can be decoded into categorical features. Now, uh, like I mentioned earlier, it is done usually for tree models to improve their accuracy. And how can it be done? Now, there are two main techniques. One is discretization and the other one is binarization. So what is discretization? So discretization is also known as binning where you divide a continuous feature into separate categories or bins and this helps increasing uh, the performance of tree based models. So we'll see an example about what discretization is. So here if you see we have a sample data set. Uh, which is actually taken from uh, our iris data set and over here we have first five values so when we say discretization now if you see the lowest value here is 4.6 and the highest value goes up to 5.1 so just for assuming this is the data set complete data set for this what you can do is you can divide it into bins like 4.6 to 4.8 then we'll have 4.8 to 5 and 5 to 5.2 so for this particular feature for this particular data these are the three bins which we can have so let's say if I name them uh, let's say 0 1 and 2 so 5.1 will be falling under 2 that's why the new column if we are to name one over here it will be decoded or you can also call it encoding as two and 4.9 will be written as one since it is falling in this specific bin or category similarly 4.7 will be written as zero 4.6 will again be written as zero and 5 will be written as 2 so 5 is this and not this because over here the upper limit is not inclusive the lower limit limit is inclusive however so in this way this uh, the specific feature can be divided into pins now this is one way of writing it now you might think that 2 1 0 and 2 this is also a numeric feature but it, is, it has limited values and you can also make it as categories so that when the tree is interpreting it, it won't interpret it as a number. It will understand it as a category. So you can do that using Python or you can also just, you know, you can also similarly write it over here as, as a string, something like 5 to 5.2. Similarly, this can be written as 4.8. 8 to 5 so and so on so you can also do it in this way or you can do it in this way but th the first one is easier because you just have to write a number so that is what discretization is all about now let us see a brief introduction about binarization so binarization so binarization is basically assigning a boolean value to a numerical feature now you might think when there is a continuous numerical feature there are so many values how can you just change it into two values into a binary feature 
Now that can be done by using a threshold value. So what is the threshold value? I'll be telling you, but let us just see the third point first. So this is useful as a feature engineering technique where you can create a new feature and which can probably provide more meaning than the original column. So again, this can be very helpful for tree based models, but is also helpful in various other models as well. So now when I say a threshold value is, uh, you know, decided and based on that, we are converting the whole numerical feature to a Boolean feature. So what that basically means is, for example, if we have values from one to 10, so uh, on an approximate, you can set a threshold value of five. That means if the value of the feature or if the value in that row is below five, it will be assigned as zero. And if it is above five, it will be assigned as one. It's as simple as that. So how this can help is, for example, let's say if you are given certain marks and you are given, you know, a target that is something like pass or fail. Now everyone has different marks. So the marks can range from zero to hundred and the passing criteria is not given. So how can your model determine that whether the target value should be pass or fail? So over here, binarization is literally what is required because we all know how one passes. There's a certain criteria in most of the time that is 60% or 50%. So when you will binarize this column of marks, you can binarize it using the threshold value. And that finding of threshold value is a very important step. So if you think of it from a machine learning model perspective, originally it will be very messy. But if the threshold value is set right, you will directly get a 100% accuracy. Because that's how there's a direct relationship of marks and pass value. So that is how binarization can be helpful. So we'll just see one example uh, on the same iris uh, data set snippet that I have. So over here, if you want to binarize this, let's say I can take the threshold value as something like five maybe. So if I take threshold equals to five, so 5.1 is definitely above or equal to 5 so that will become 1 4.9 will be 0 4.7 will be 0 4.6 will be 0 and 5 will be 1 because it is greater than or equal to 5 so this is how a binarized column will look like in this case and it is very simple you just check the feature value and compare it with the threshold value and if it matches or is greater, it's signed as one, else it is zero. So it's as simple as that. Now let us move ahead with the presentation. Okay, so now we have to see the documentation. So this is the official documentation uh, from the scikit-learn website and pre-processing data. We have already uh, talked about in the previous uh, video, we talked about uh, missing values, so imputation. Now we are seeing uh, encoding of categorical features, which is over here. And if you see that in this, they talk about ordinal encoder, which I've already talked about. And there is also one hot encoding. So like you can see one hot encoder. Now they are trying out different examples or how you can tweak a model or how you can tweak the encoding. And they're just uh, trying different ways and you can uh, look at them uh, as and when required. So these are the only two types of encoding talked to here. So those are the two which we'll see in our code. And yes, then this is the next topic. So like you see, it's just one hot encoding and the ordinal encoding. So let us go back. Uh, I think next we have coding. Yes, so let us uh, go ahead and see the sample code. So we'll continue in the same file. I just add text over here saying numerical features and we'll start the code. So firstly, 
import and just click on connect so that we won't have problem later import pandas as pd and from sklearn.data sets we'll take the iris data set import load underscore iris and now for discretization okay so i'll just put a comment for discretization so from sklearn dot preprocessing we will import key bins discretizer so there it is let us just run and check right now let's take a variable let's say disc which stands for discretizer equals to k bins discretizer and we can take the num n bins like you see uh, so n bins is the first parameter which will be the number of bins so n bins uh, it can be 5 it can be 3 depends on how you want to you know uh, divide it so uh, we saw the iris data set and we can take it as 3 because there's not much variance over there and then we will encode it so if you see the second parameter encode so there are uh, various ways you can encode it using it's either one hot or one hot dense or ordinal so by default is one hot but we will be trying ordinal encoding so encode equals to ordinal and strategy equals to uniform so let us take a variable d and load the data set load iris and then we'll convert it into a data frame pd dot data frame data equals to d dot data and columns equals to d dot feature underscore names so the code is working fine so far now we'll just see our data set df dot head the first five rows so yes now we have already transformed it actually and no no we have taken the discretizer now we have to transform it so let's say disc dot fit underscore transform and the tf now if you want to transform one specific column you'll just have to put the column name over here if you want to transform the whole data frame you can just put the uh, variable where the data frame is stored now this has divided into bins and you can see one zero this two so we had taken a total of three bins that's why you just find zero one and two in all the columns so it has been discretized and now if you want to see uh, what are the you know the limits of the bin you can also see that and we can do that using let's say bins equal to disc dot bin underscore hs underscore so that will give us an idea as to how they were distributed so i'll just print bins so you can see uh, it is in the form of a 2d array so the first array is basically the first column so the first column you have 4.3 to 5.5 as one bin 5.5 to 6.7 as one bin and 6.7 to 7.9 as one bin so you can see that it's divided into three bins total and these are the limits so 
again uh, one important thing is that each bin should have a you know a same same uh, what do you call it same number of same distance or you can say so like over here uh, it is 1.2 same size sorry same size is what i'm trying to say so 5.5 minus 4.3 you can see is, is 1.2 similarly the difference here is 1.2 and the difference here is 1.2 so when you're discretizing the bin size should be same so that is one important thing now over here again if you see for the second feature it is 2 to 2.8 2.8 to 3.6 and 3.6 to 4.4 again over here the bin size is 0.8 so that was about discretization now we can also see binarization so for binarization now so from sklearn dot grid processing you import binarizer so let's say b equals to binarizer and so we have to take a threshold now threshold so let's take the threshold as 5 maybe and before that we'll once again see our data frame so i just print the data frame head so uh, we'll just uh, binarize this specific sepal length column and if the threshold is 5 this should be shown as 1 then the three zeros and this one should be 1 again so that is how it should look let us see now b dot fit underscore transform df and we'll just take one column if you want to do all you can do you can just put df over here so dot values dot reshape okay so there's a spelling error over here transform yes and that's working so if you remember if you see over here we have taken threshold as 5 the first value in the sepal column is 5.1 so like we saw on the whiteboard it should be 1 because it has crossed the threshold second one is 4.9 so of course 0 then 4.7 so 0 again 4.6 0 again and 5 okay so 5 is not inclusive so it will be 1 only when it is greater than 5 so over here the next value which is not seen in this is greater than 5 that's why it is encoded as 1 so when it is about threshold it should be greater than and not equal to then it will be encoded as 1 else it will be encoded as 0 so that is all about binarization and it is pretty simple so let us see what we have in the presentation next right so that's it from this video and we saw about the discretization and binarization basically how to handle numerical features and both of them were pretty simple and scikit-learn library has a very simple way of doing both the things so that's it and once again thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video